What's going on YouTube? We have some big news in the Bellatra community. The first major balance update is now live. We are live with 1.01F, or I believe, I I thought it was F. Yeah, 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 F, but down here it says N. Regardless, this is the massive update that we have been testing out for several weeks now. It is finally live, which means on PC, on Steam, you no longer need to be on the experimental patch. You can go ahead and just play. Everyone should be getting this update. Consoles are going to have to wait just a bit longer because this needs to be approved by both Sony and Microsoft as well as Nintendo on the Switch, which is unfortunate that they have to wait, but hopefully that process goes through as quickly as humanly possible. And uh, let's review the changes. So we had a big you know, video talking about all the patch notes from the experimental betas. Most of that that was talked about in those videos is going to apply here, but let's just run through all the changes one more time together in this video so you know what to expect when you update Bellatro later today if you're on PC or you update Bellatro a little bit in the future if you are on consoles. So update the version of Love 2D, the engine, um, just to make it a little bit more performance enhanced, I believe. I don't know the tech technicalities that went behind this, but all in all, my game has been smooth since launch and hopefully this just improves it for everybody. We have the reduced motion toggle, which will hopefully help people feel a little less sick. We changed the default fallback tarot from full to strength when all tarots are on screen. So this is just, if you have every single tarot and it's the game is forcing one, it's not the full, it's the strength. This gets rid of an uh, exploit that actually Blotcher University talked about and uncovered on a video. Ban top tag and anti matter from Joker list. So Joker list, there was a way to get one singular Joker, no longer possible. Change gold stake random seats now ensures first legendary on that seat is a joker that you have not won. We already talked about this. Basically, if you're going for completionist plus plus, which is having the joker sticker on or the gold sticker on every single joker, this will now make it a lot easier to get on those legendaries as you're not going to get Chakot 18 times in a row and you're sitting there like, I need to roll a legendary and it's so RNG heavy. This is going to help you get completionist plus plus. The scaling on white, green, and purple stakes all scales a little bit um slower now the original beta patch it was a bigger change and then it was tweaked to be a you know a nice little medium so we still have a little bit slower scaling for the most part but if you go to the purple stake and you go up to i believe anti six seven and eight those are going to now actually scale a tad faster same thing with anti's six seven and eight in green stake so all in all, the early game a little bit easier, later game a little bit tougher. I think this is a good balance because the way you scale with your jokers, with your cards in Bellatro, it works out this way. And I think this is just a more balanced way to approach it. Orange and gold stake had major overhauls. So orange stake, you no longer have the increasing pack cost. That's completely gone. We have a new sticker similar to eternal jokers, but in this case, the exact opposite, perishable jokers, which means after five rounds, the joker stops working. At gold stake, no longer minus one hand size. Uh, instead, another joker sticker, which is called rental, which makes the joker $1, but you have to pay $3 at the end of every round that you use it. Eternal jokers now uh, apply in buffoon packs as well as the rental and perishable jokers. So you will get those in buffoon packs. We changed the location of those stickers from the beta because they were in a weird place. Uh, Non-retroactive scaling jokers cannot be perishable. So stuff like ceremonial dagger, glass joker, hologram and stuff that scales once you get it cannot be perishable because they would be basically useless. However, something like supernova, which technically can be already scaled up when you purchase it still can be perishable. So Supernova could be at plus 15 molt for your high card because you already played 15 high cards, so that can be perishable if you're a little confused on what this note means. Change the first shop in every run to have a normal buffoon pack, which is nice, just so you can have a joker if you so choose. You can now see the upcoming blinds once you play the boss, which is such a nice little feature. And if you're wondering how to do that, just go to run info and then click on the blinds and you'll see the next ante. Some blinds are now banned on challenge runs, so we made... Joker list is a bit easy because easier because now you're not going to get Verdant Leaf. However, in another sense, it's a little bit harder because <laughs> you could have rolled Crimson Heart and Amber Acorn, which wouldn't affect you on Joker list. We banned Verdant Leaf on Typecast, on Non-Perishable, and the Plant on Mad World. So some good changes there. We buffed a few of the Planet cards, including Saturn and Neptune, both gaining a little bit more Molt as well as Ceres. 
And then Eris gets a few more chips for that flush five, making the flush five just a little bit better than the five of a kind, kind of giving the nod to the fact that it is a bit harder to get. There is a ton of Joker changes, and most of these are the same as we talked about in the beta, but we can run through these. We now have the square Joker, now a square sprite. So <laughs> the, the square Joker is now actually square. Blue Joker sprite was fixed, two out of place blue pixels. Uncommon. Um, oh, first let's talk about the tags. There's been a big tag change in this update. So these skip tags, uncommon, rare, negative polychrome, ho hollow, and foil tags, all the tags that basically give you jokers, those jokers are now free in the shop when you use the tag. So this can really help if you're kind of struggling and you're going for a little bit of a desperation play and you really need a joker, you can go ahead and skip and you will get that joker for free in the next shop as long as you can beat you know the next blind to get to that shop investment tag also got a huge buff to plus 25 dollars after you defeat the next boss blind instead of 15 eight ball was changed to a one in four chance to spawn tarot card if an eight is played and scored which is really nice blue seal got a massive buff to create the planet card plate of the final poker hand not random so this way if you're playing high cards and the last poker hand played in that round is a high card you will get a pluto if you're going after flush fives, it will be an heiress. It is made blue seals much more viable, much more in line with the purple, red, and gold seals. So this was a huge change. Change both Mad and Clever Joker. Scrapped contains four of a kind effect, now applies to two pairs. So yeah, Mad and Clever Joker are now two pair jokers instead of four of a kind. I think that makes sense. York had a big change where now you get times one. It's a scaling joker that gets one more X mult every 23 cards discarded. This means you can start using it a lot quicker. You can also scale it technically infinitely. So it's a very, very good card now. Um, still not in line with like a Tribulet or a Perkeo, but at the same time, if you're just trying to win a run, York is so much more viable now. I think this was a great change. Magician now makes two lucky cards, which is great. Minus Mask got a little bit of a nerf and now only applies the gold to scoring face cards and also costs a little bit more, but I think this makes a lot of sense. Vampire, this got heavily nerfed and then rebuffed a tiny bit. So now it only removes enhancements from scoring cards, which is fair, but it only gives, and it also only gives 0.1 molt per enhancement instead of 0.2. Look, it was too powerful before. I like this in the original beta. It was also rare. And with these nerfs, it shouldn't have been rare in my opinion it should have stayed uncommon and you know local thunk took all of her feedback and he did exactly that so shout out to local thunk i think really listening to the community and i think this is kind of that perfect little tweak change madness now only applies on small big blinds so madness of course scales um by 0.5 x small every single round but this no longer applies to boss blinds but that means it also doesn't destroy a card on the boss blind so very interesting change here to-do list is a lot more viable because it won't be stuck on something like straight flush where you have to play straight flush or it'll never change. It will always change at the end of the round. Small change to shortcut to make it more understandable. Ancient Joker, the selected suit will no longer repeat. Sometimes I was getting, you know, clubs five times in a row. That no longer will happen. Swashbuckler got a massive buff. It now will give the plus molt um, of the cell value of all your jokers no matter where you play swashbuckler which means we can place it all the way on the left and that way your additive molt is now on the left before swashbuckler kind of had to be played on the right and having additive molt all the way on the right was not helpful hanging chad i now call it the giga chad because it re-triggers the first card two times which is a massive buff if you use something like this with a photograph and a glass card on a face card that card, that one card can usually be enough to almost win your run for you. So this is a huge buff. I think maybe a little far to the point where Hanging Chad maybe should be uncommon. I don't know. Uh, Runner and all the chip jokers now start at plus zero chips. Um, Runner specifically got buffed to plus 15 chips per street. Um, or got nerfed to plus 15 was... No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> got buffed to plus 15 was at plus 10. Um, so a little bit of a middle ground here. I still don't think runner is very viable because Saturn, uh, the planet card four straights already, you know, scales so quickly. Flyer pot now includes the base suit of debuff cards when determining if it will trigger. This is a huge advantage and makes flyer pot uh, just a bit more viable. Bootstraps will now let you know how much molt you're getting. All the sinful jokers, the suit jokers give a little bit less molt per that suit, which is fine. I think as common cards plus three is a good middle ground. Banner got nerfed just a bit to plus 30 chips per remain discard instead of plus 40. Fair enough. Fibonacci 
Uh, now cost eight instead of seven because Fibonacci. We love the themed jokers. Square joker, you know, same thing as um, runner and we joker. They're all going to start at zero chips. You're not going to start with anything there. Steel joker now gives times 0.2 per steel card in full deck instead of 0.25. Makes sense because you can make a lot of steel cards very quickly and steel cards are already powerful. I think this is a good you know, balance to put in line with the other jokers that are similar to it, like Glass Joker and Lucky Cat. Odd Todd now gives plus three one chips to make it odd. Uh, six cents, now uncommon. Six dollars was rare. Think this is a great change. Six cents is now one of my favorite jokers. I'm so glad with, I'm really happy with this change. Hiker now gives plus five chips to every scoring card, was plus four. I think this buff is needed and makes it just a bit more viable. Gross Michelle, that was a one in six chance of going extinct instead of one in four. This is actually a pretty big nerf to Cavendish because now it takes longer to get Cavendish to spawn because Cavendish will only spawn the shop once Gross Michelle goes extinct. However, it is kind of a nice buff to have Gross Michelle stay a bit longer in the early game. So I think Gross Michelle is an early game Joker, got a buff. Cavendish overall got a huge nerf. Seance, now uncommon, makes sense. It's not a very useful Joker. You have to play straight flush to get one spectral card. Riff Raff was six. Or now six stars was six. I think this is fair since it's spawning jokers, common jokers every single round. Vagabond is now rare. I think this makes sense. Vagabond is extraordinarily powerful. It moved to eight dollars and it got a bit of a buff with its move to rare to now applies when you have four dollars or, or less instead of three, which means it will spawn a tarot card every hand played at four dollars or less. Uh, with that three, it was really hard to manage. At four, that wiggle room is really nice and I think it fits its, you know, rareness. <laughs> Uh, for the lack of a better term, with this buff. Cloud9, $7 was 6 I don't really get this. I feel like Cloud9 should be a little bit cheaper. This is maybe one of the only things in this huge list of tweaks that I don't agree with, but I'm also not saying Local Thunk did a bad job or any means. I'm curious to see how it plays. Mail and Rebate now gives $5, was $3. Mail and Rebate is super powerful. Um, if you watch my new personal best run, the part one's up right now on the YouTube channel, you'll see how powerful <laughs> Mail and Rebate is. Zerg Parking, now common, was uncommon. I think this is good because while it can be very good for specific high card runs, it's not the greatest joker, and I think it makes sense to appear in the shop a little bit more. Lucky Cat got a big buff. Well, a decent-sized buff. Times 0.25 per Lucky Proc was 0.2. Trading card now costs a little bit more. It's a fantastic card that allows you to deck thin while making money. Campfire gains 0.25 per card sold instead of 0.5 x This is a huge nerf, but at the same time, was kind of needed. Campfire with a half decent economy was basically an instant win or campfire with something like a vagabond was basically an instant win on most stakes. So now it's going to be a little bit trickier. It's still a good joker, but I think it's more in line with other jokers that give X molt. Smiley face now gives plus five per molt per face card. I think this is a decent buff. Golden ticket now gives four dollars per gold card instead of plus three. I think this makes a ton of sense because now you have an incentive to play the gold cards a little bit more when you have golden ticket um, i would put all the way at plus five but the fact that golden ticket can proc with a blueprint or with a brainstorm already gives it a decent advantage so i think four dollars is a middle ground maybe i would have jumped the gun to five dollars but this is why local thunks the dev and i'm not <laughs> bloodstone now gives a one in two chance instead of one in three but it did get degraded to 0.15 molt x molt instead of 2x molt which all in all, I think is a good middle ground. I'm glad it procs more. I'm glad that the molt was down because there was a time there in the beta where it was one in two chance, but it was giving two X molt, which was just insane. Onyx Agate now gives plus seven molt per club instead of plus eight. And then Glass Joker now gives 0.75 molt per glass card destroyed was 0.5. This is a buff that was needed. And we have a few more here and I can't scroll. So we're going to go over to the text file <laughs> and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, let me shape it for you guys. So we have Stuntman is the next one. Now gives plus 250 chips, was plus 300, and is rare. Um, I think this makes a lot of sense. Stuntman was such a powerful card. It still is a powerful card. It should be a rare card. Um, and people may be saying, then why did you nerf the amount of chips if you moved up to rare? It still kind of needed that. Um, in my opinion, it's it's that good of a card, especially as an early Joker can just like allow you to do basically whatever you want in the early game to build your run. And then you can always get rid of it. So I think Stuntman um, is kind of perfect. It's per 
I don't want to say perfectly balanced, but in a really good position with these notes. Invis Joker now only needs two rounds uh, and costs $8 plus three rounds and costs 10. I think this makes Invis Joker a lot more viable for runs where you're just trying to win. Uh, Invis Joker was always viable for high scoring runs, but now it has a little bit more of a purpose in higher stakes runs. Burnt Joker is now uncommon, was rare. Fair enough. I think this makes sense. Burnt Joker, very, very good Joker, but it just kind of fit the uncommon uh, section a little bit better. Chance working on most scaling, Jokers are referred to this Joker. Fixed a bug where opening booster packs with hand size of zero was unskippable. Skippable. This is great. I think Hulahan, <laughs> shout out Hulahan, was actually one of the first people to get soft locked uh, doing this. Uh, Fixed a bug where a card generated by certificate was not being debuffed by the boss. Darn it. I thought that was kind of on purpose, and I kind of love that about certificate. Turns out it was a bug. Fixed bug uh, in the rate in which eternal perishable jokers were being generated in the beta. So they were actually coming up, I believe, a little too much. So now it's uh, back to where it should be at 30%. Fix a bug where buffoon packs could show up in Jokerless Challenge. That's nice to not have that. Fix a bug where debuffed negative jokers being sold doesn't reduce the number of available joker slots. I never actually ran into that. That's very interesting. And then fix a bug where sticker seeding was shared between shops and booster packs. And that's it. Those are all the patch notes for the new Live Blotro patch. So go on Steam, go update your game, and go have fun with the new patch. I think it's fantastic. I think these changes by Local Thunk were not only somewhat needed, but they, they were just really well done. Shout out to Local Thunk. He made a fantastic game. He is obviously cares about this game. He's supporting this game. Go have fun with it. And consoles, I'm sure you will get this update soon. Hopefully the patch is able to get pushed through by the quote unquote console authorities as quickly as possible and you're able to enjoy it as well. That's going to be it. Hit the like if you like this. Dislike if you didn't. Comment down below what what tweaks you liked, you didn't like, what tweaks you want to see in the future, and hit that subscribe button because you don't want to end up like Murphy. I'm not subscribed to Zeno on, on YouTube. And I'm sorry. There we go. We're subscribed. Subscription ad.